As you can see, I haven't gotten much better. So we are gathered here today. Wait, we are gathered here separately in our own homes via the means of digital communication so that we can expose the amount of books I haven't read. <laughs> Actually, it's fine. You shouldn't shame people for not reading books. That's just stupid. You should just shame me for other things like just being an idiot. <laughs> this is a challenge created by Rachel Marie. You can check out her video in the description. I originally saw this on Brightness Katie Reads channel, so you can go check out her channel as well. And because this is a charity challenge for COVID relief, I will leave a donation link in the description below if you'd like to contribute and find out more. But basically, we're just going to look at the most popular books on the internet and talk about which ones I like, which ones I haven't read yet, and which ones I thought were hot garbage. Rachel Marie has made a little graphic I'll put here. The first author on this list is Angie Thomas. She wrote The Hate You Give and On The Come Up. I really want to get to this one but I just haven't yet so looking forward to The Hate You Give Me in the comments below. Thank you. That was a good one. Well done. Next is Tahira Mafi with the Shadow Me series. This is like a classic YA series and I somehow missed it. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have any interest in this. I feel like I just missed the timing. Plus like the last one I think just came out and people don't really like it that much. So I don't really, not for me. Next is Lee Bardugo. Why would you trigger me like that? Did you not see how emotional Six of Crows made me? I literally became goth. Anyway, I read Six of Crows and, and people were like, oh, you should check out the Grisha series first because Kruger Kingdom spoils that entire series. So picked up this bad boy, thought it was fine, got about halfway through Season Storm and thought, I'm not enjoying this. It's very much of the 2012 YA era and that just bores me now. It's like every author between 2010 and 2014 picked five tropes and then mix and matched them. So that whole era of YA is just really off-putting to me by now and that kind of feels a bit sad, but that's how it is. So I'm probably not gonna finish this one. I've heard mixed things about King of Stars, uh, King of Stars, King of Scars, so maybe, maybe not, that's a bit of a toss up. And then Ninth House, I'm actually reading right now for a Dark Academia video. Ooh. Let's just take, let's just take one more moment. Yeah. Good stuff. The Coral Prince by Holly Black. Now I'm gonna be real here. I don't give a shit about fairies. <laughs> if you fly, goodbye. No flings with the wings, you know what I'm saying? And we'll talk about another fairy book a little bit later on, but I just don't have any interest in this series. After watching Peter Pan 400 times as a kid, you'll never be able to convince me that fairies are like dark, brooding, menacing creatures. Not even if you try and call them fae or spell them like fairy, F-A-E-R or however. They just try and s like change the spellings so that you think they're not the same thing. But they're just like elves with a superiority complex. They're not like evil. I don't know. I've read one other Holly Black book and it didn't really vibe with me. The Bone Witch by Rin Jibeko. I've heard of this and I'm very intrigued, but I don't really know anything about it. Victoria Schwab. How? Okay, you guys want to know something. So in my community book tag, I said there was two authors I would automatically buy anything that they put out. The first one was Marcus Zusak, who wrote The Book Thief, and the second one, Victoria Schwab. I have a bunch of her books here that you probably can't see, but I just really love her writing. It's not even her writing, it's more like the feeling that you get when you read her writing, I guess, and her stories. She gave this talk where she said she wants her stories to make people sort of doubt their reality. Not in an unhealthy way, but more of like a whimsical, non-medication necessary way. Sort of just opening up the possibility that there is like more to the world, there's more to that wardrobe, there's more to that door, there's more to that, I don't know, crack in the ground or university thesis or creepy old house, you know? It's that more than quality that I really love about her stories and her writing. Oh, and I am very excited <laughs> for The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue this year. So excited. I literally will not be buying any other books this year except for that one book. This book, it has the vibes. I can feel it. Every time I hear about it, I just feel the vibes. It's good vibes. It's about the devil and a deal. Mm, it's got some like messing with time elements because there's like an immortal. Mm, love that. Next is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. And I kind of lumped this one in with the Shadow Me series in that I completely missed the hype for it. I don't really have any plans to pick it up, even though I've heard that it's very quick to get through and it's fun and entertaining. Adam Silvera. 
I'm sure they're good. I haven't read any Adam Silvera books. And to be honest, I don't know why. Have you read any Adam Silvera books? Do you like it? Did you cry? Did it make you happy? These are all emotions. I would like to take a small break right now. In the middle of this video, around the halfway point probably, I think, maybe. How are you doing? Are you comfortable in whatever you're sitting or standing in right now? Do you get yourself a nice drink to watch this video with? Or maybe you just have it going on in the background while you're doing some chores, editing something. I don't know. I don't know your life. I just realized I probably don't have much storage space left on my camera. But instead of speeding up this video, let's just take a minute to reflect on the storage space in our own brain. And let's just making sure we're taking care of that storage space and not filling it with negativity. Back to the video. Cassandra Clare is hot garbage. I'm joking, I got you. I like Cassandra Clare. Actually, when I went to go find City of Bones for this video because I knew I'd had it from when I was 14, I was looking through the cupboard and I realized I have like three of that series. I have the first one, the second one, and the fourth one, which makes sense. I only remember reading this one and I remember not being too keen on it. I was too absorbed by angsty werewolves and angsty vampires and angsty werewolves falling in love with angsty vampire. Wait, that's not how that's not how that worked. Point is, I had enough supernatural creatures to be thinking about without having this whole other world of demons, and I was like, nah, I'm good. Also, I feel like my era of YA was just dumb dominated by guys with their shirt off or girls in dresses. Like why were the covers of those books always so horny? Because teens don't have enough to be insecure about without carrying around a book like this with like a half naked dude on the cover. They're all just like, you know what we need? We need a stock image and let's put the background as all like wispy. We didn't get any of those cool Angie Thomas, Adam Silvera illustrated covers that are so trendy now. We got this garbage. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people love this book and the cover, but I just... Why couldn't we get some nice illustrated stuff? Anyway, that's my rampage. Point being, last year I listened to the entire Infernal Devices on audiobook and I really enjoyed them. Everybody was like, Lauren, you should read them. And I was like, nah, and you were right. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. I should listen to you more often. And I'm currently reading The Dark Artifices. Yeah, I always get the series titles wrong. Fun fact, I actually started reading this series because I wanted to buy this book because I like the cover so much. It is a girl in a dress, again. And it also has like the wispy bits behind that I was talking about. But still, I just really like this cover. This was $2. I found this for $2. And that's what made me start reading Cassandra Clare books again. So thank you, Target, and your $2 deals. Next is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I don't think I've ever heard of this book. Like, I don't really know what you're talking about. I don't think many people really talk about that book on YouTube. Like, is that some sort of underground thing or... You know I'm just trolling, me. Um, why are you trying to make me emotional in a video again? This was fantastic. I read... Daisy Jones and the Six, and then I read this. I was kind of disappointed that if you read one of these books, the ending of the other book isn't going to be as surprising because you can kind of see the format. I don't need to explain why you should go read this book. If you are interested in it, you should go read it. I just want Taylor Jenkins Reid to write a memoir of my life because both of these historical ladies are very flawed and like same but i feel like if taylor jenkins reed can make them look good in a memoir style historical fiction then like she can do anything she can make me look good she can make my boring life interesting to read about and that's just all i really want clearly her specialty is making sad slightly annoying women who drink too much into superstars so i feel like it would be a really good fit for me like hello i'm over here for source material if you want Lainey taylor is the next author i haven't read her Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, but I have read these beautiful editions of Strange to Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. I promise I won't sing anymore. I'm so sorry. These were the first books that I was recommended by BookTube and then I actually bought and read because of BookTube. So that's kind of cool. And I remember them sort of getting me back in the groove of reading a lot more. I really love Laszlo as a character and Sarai is pretty cool too. But yeah, I adore those. It's such a beautiful story. It's really imaginative. It always makes you feel like you're in the corner of a library or a car or something and you just have to be extremely immersed in them. Next one is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a five star for me. I hate that Gemini is sitting over there and it stares at me every single day until I pick it up and actually read the sequel. You are probably wondering what the best way to read this book is and let me tell you what it is. It is 
reading the physical book, like looking through it, while you are listening to the audiobook because, oh my god, that is the superior way to read this. Because it's mixed media and it's like set in space, you can see the files that they're sending to each other while listening to like the sound effects of an email being sent or like a gun being shot or things whizzing by in space. It's really cool. Scythe by Neil Schusterman, one of my favorites. I'm, um, I'm sorry, I sang again. I'm so sorry. I don't have the first one with me because I'm forcing it on my brother to read, but Thunderhead was wonderful. I love all of the philosophical aspects of these books in this series. I think this was probably my favorite from the series. I think that the toll, well, yeah, maybe it wasn't as good as the first two, but like, people were really let down by it and that I just like don't know what else it could have given you, you know? Like why were you disappointed? I understand like it's kind of slow and it's kind of like weird, but like what else do you want? <laughs> I don't really know how else you could have ended the series. Sarah J Maas. I liked the first one. I thought it was good. I also enjoyed the second one. I am reading the third one now. The thing that I have with these books is that they're just so long for the amount of like nothing that kind of happens. I really liked Rysand in the first book and I'm really glad that we got to see more of him in the second book. We got to see a lot more of him, if you know what I mean. But I think he's the most interesting character. We love to hate read about the sister. I think her name's Nerissa or Nerissa or something. Why? What happened to her? Like, why is she so mean? <laughs> These books are like candy but like the hard candy that gets like stuck in your teeth and then you can't get it out for like days and like even if no matter how hard you try. Considering how much I don't like fairies, I did really like this book. I'm looking forward to continuing the last book in the series. I heard it gets kind of epic, so that should be fun. An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I need to read this and I did have a physical copy, but then it got lost. Seanan Maguire, AKA Mira Grant, AKA the author that most perfectly encompasses the feeling of punk rock. She wrote the Every Heart of Doorway series, she wrote Middle Games, she wrote this book, Into the Drowning Deep, which is about killer mermaids, and I got about halfway through. For some reason, I just put it down. I don't know why, have to finish it. I wasn't too keen on the Every Heart of Doorway series, though I did like the Goblin one. I think I gave that one four stars, that was my favorite. But yeah, I haven't even got to the killer mermaid part in this, and I need to do that because I wanna see some demon fish eat some people. To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. I don't really have an interest in reading this series. I think this is out of the age range I'm interested in now. And that makes me feel really old. I can't believe Twilight came out 15 years ago. Also, you should check out my old people video. I don't have anything else to say about this, so I'm doing some shameless self-promotion. The Poppy War by RF Kuang. This is about a war? It's Asian inspired? I don't know that much about it. I would be down to read this, but I haven't yet, which is disappointing. Keeping on theme with this video. Which one of these books would you recommend the most? Is there one that is completely undeserving of the hype? Probably, definitely. It's all very opinionated. Currently, I am reading Dream Thieves and New Moon. Please do your best to stop me from rereading this series again. I can't help myself. It is not a want, it is a need. And frankly, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, have a good day, unsubscribe, goodbye.